Good evening, thank you for watching our current affairs briefing in English where we're taking a look at the developments of the fraudulent hospital contracts. We are in Valletta and we'll be taking a look at the further measures taken by the leader of the opposition, Dr. Bernard Grech and Dr. Adrian Delia to repatriate the money that was paid fraudulently to the US healthcare companies, Stewards and Vitals Healthcare. I will be speaking with Dr. Edward de Bon. very much Dr. De Bono for agreeing to give us an update on the case of the hospital scandal. Thank you and good evening to you and all who is all our viewers. We've seen some developments recently with the leader of the opposition Dr. Bernard Gregg and Dr. Adrian Delia taking measures to repatriate the money that was paid fraudulently to Stewart's Healthcare. Yes. You are correct, um, but I think before we enter into the merits of the new case that has been filed by Dr. the Leader of the Opposition and Dr. Delia, we should put a resume of actually what happened till now. A recap for yes. those who don't know. As you are aware, on the 23rd of October 2023, the Court of Appeal decided the case against stewards and vitals were basically um, they were not only held responsible that they were fraudulent towards the Maltese people but their fraud was also concocted by the highest officials of the Maltese government and these highest officials of the Malta government who were involved in collusion and fraud with vitals and stewards were nonetheless then Chris Cardona, who signed the Memorandum of Understanding prior to the, uh, the, RF, the RFP was issued by, by government, that is the request for proposals, and uh, also by Conrad Mitzi, who signed the temporary amphitheatrical concession, and obviously Joseph Muscat, who was the deus ex machina who had given the go-ahead to Chris Cardona and Conrad Mitzi to concoct this heinous, abysmal, corrupt deal with vitals when they were not capable of actually moving forward our hospitals. They had no experience in the field and they were only before the disagreement with government, they managed some Ayurveda um, clinics in Canada. Apart from the fact that the companies that they owned in Canada were declared fraudulent and bankrupt through um, their offices. Basically, they ran them down completely to the ground.
Now, after this judgment, which found collusion between the vitals and stewards and the highest officials in Malta government, the leader of the opposition and Dr. Delia promised that they would take further action against all those involved in this criminality. Why? Because once now corruption was proven by the judgment of the Court of Appeal, which is a final judgment where it has specifically indicted um, these highest officials as being part of the corrupt of the fraud that was concocted, they are to pay personally and jointly and severally with vitals for all the monies which had been paid out by the Malta government to these companies who didn't give us anything in return. Mm -hmm. And when I'm saying anything in return, I mean that all we have paid for the structural improvements of these hospitals, this was never effected by stewards and prior to that, vitals. So, the first question one would ask, why did Joseph Muscat and subsequently Robert Abela continued paying out for the structural improvements of the three hospitals when this was not done. There is nothing effected in the three hospitals. They are still in a dilapidated state, particularly St. Luke's, and Karen Grek is in a shambles, and the Gozo Hospital, nothing was done basically. There was just um, some excavation works which were not concluded. So, in all these circumstances, why did the Minister of Finance, Professor Edward Chikluna, and his private, not his private secretary, his, his, the secretary of the ministry appointed by government, continue dishing out payments when all this was not done, when they knew. Because before this judgment, the Auditor General had already filed two reports stating that nothing was being effected by vitals or stewards. After this judgment then, the leader of the opposition and Dr. Delia filed an action which, is, which was appointed for hearing um, on, the, on the 8th of January 2024 where they are asking the state advocate to move against all those that acted in collusion with vitals and steward in a fraudulent manner. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, that sounds quite tricky, really, because you say all those in, with regards to the collusion. Where do you draw the line? For example, you also spoke about payments. For example, with regards to Professor Edward Chikluna, who was Minister of Finance at that time, what are the implications for him? In my opinion, that Professor Chikluna has a lot to answer because as the Minister of Finance, he should not have authorised structural payments when no improvements were being effected to our, to our hospitals. When I say improvements, I'm saying structural improvements. Mm -hmm. Everybody can go to the three hospitals, that is St. Luke's, Karen Grek and the Gozo Hospital, and would confirm visually that nothing has been done. I mean, it's not a grey area, it's black or white. It's, it's absolutely clear, mm. absolutely mm. clear. So what would the implications be for now, Professor Shikluna, so for example? The implications of Professor Shikluna, if the state advocate wants him to do his duty according to law, he is authorised by Article 91 
of the Constitution to take action against all those who have acted fraudulently against the interests of the state, of the state, and try to retrieve back all the monies which were fraudulently taken away from us abusively. Now, but it one, sounds very complex to me. No, but one would state, so why are these Maltese factories? Has, has, has it been proven that they've taken money from the state coffers? Yes, it has been proven that they acted more in the interest of Feitels and stewards than in the interest of the Maltese people. Mm -hmm. And when corruption is proven that basically these people have benefited at our expense with collusion from the Maltese functionaries, these Maltese functionaries are to be held responsibly together with Vitals and Stewart to pay back the state all that has been stolen. Mm -hmm. And what has been stolen? What has been stolen and paid unnecessarily by us to Vitals and Stewart is over 400 million euros. But if the money is not <coughs> being used for what it should have been used, uh, where's the money? Well, that's the million dollar question. The money must be in the hands of those who have acted fraudulently and in collusion with vitals and stewards. I don't need, or the state does not need to go after and find that this money is deposited in a bank in Vanuatu or in a bank in Liechtenstein or a bank in Dubai or wherever. It is enough just to prove that collusion has actually taken place with vitals and stewards for the Maltese functionaries to be held responsible. Now, government is stating in his reply, actually the state advocate and even government, is stating in their reply um, in the application which has been filed by the leader of the opposition and Dr. Delia, that this case is prejudicing our case in the arbitration proceedings started by Stewart and the counter reply filed, the counter claim filed by government. My answer to that is very simple. The action against stewards in the arbitration proceedings should not have started. Because once the action has been declared null and void, annulled completely by the Maltese courts, there is no action which stewards should have brought against the Maltese government. Why? Because what is null and void does not produce or have any effect at law. Everything has finished. Everything has gone to the position before the contract was actually entered into. So I hope government in their reply would have stated that the arbitration proceedings cannot continue in um, uh, by the arbiter because the, this contract was declared null and void. And they should not have even submitted a counterclaim in the arbitration proceedings because by doing so they are, they are trying to justify, justify as if the judgment of the Maltese courts on appeal has no validity. Whilst in actual fact, the Maltese courts were categoric and I presume by the end of this month, the contract has to be annulled 
by a notary public appointed by court to actually um, uh, file in the public registry the nullity of the previous concession. So, in your opinion, I mean, how, how did they get away with it for so long? Well, they did not get away with it for, for so long. The problem was that when the, the leader of the opposition at the time, Dr. Delia, took action four or five years ago, the whole process took us four or five years to finish. So, since 2018, if I'm not mistaken, action was taken, but obviously there were um, hindrances and uh, you know, procrastination from government and from stewards not to get a judgment in a, in a, in a time, in a short time. As a matter of fact, we tried in this second action because we felt that now it's not correct after the nullity was proven, to continue going to a new action, which could take some time, that we applied for urgency, but the court decided that there is no urgency, but decided that the case should take priority. So, in actual fact, the case was appointed for hearing within two weeks. Um, in the meantime, government wanted to intervene in the case and filed an application to intervene and even this this intervention by government proves only one thing that they want to intervene in the case because they want to make pressure on the state advocate and keep him under their heels they don't want to give the state advocate the independence which the law, the constitution gives him, which states unequivocally that he can act without the authority of any person or authority. But the state advocate is saying, no, I am the lawyer of the executive, that is of the government, and being the lawyer of the government, I have to take instructions from government. We are stating, no, Dr. Um, state Advocate, uh, Dr. Soller, you're mistaken. Your action is independent from government role, particularly when there are officials of the present government and the previous government who were fraudulent vis-a-vis -vis the multi-state. You are the lawyer of the multi-state, which means of the executive, of the judiciary, and of the legislative, legislative which is basically means parliament. Mm -hmm. So in the circumstances, when people in authority have acted against the interests of the state, as declared by another organ of state, that is the judiciary, the highest court declared that this contract is fraudulent and that people in the highest echelons of government acted abusively and in illegally, then you have to take action. And this is what we are trying to achieve in the lawsuit which has been filed by the leader of the opposition and Dr. Delia. The Nationalist Party has declared its unwavering support for Prime Minister Robert Abela in the event that the government initiates legal proceedings to reclaim the 400 million euros lost in the controversial hospitals deal. The leader of the opposition, Dr. Bernard Grech, said that the Nationalist Party is committed to assist the government in recovering the funds. However, Dr. Brex said that to date, the government has not taken any steps in this regard. Instead, the Nationalist Party is proactively taking the initiative to pursue legal action in order to repatriate the 400 million euros paid to the US private healthcare companies for managing three public hospitals. 
This theme goes back to 2015 and involves St. Luke's Hospital, Karen Gregg Hospital and the Gozo General Hospital. The contract was nullified by the court in February last year. The court described the transaction as fraudulent and tainted with collusion. Addressing journalists outside the courts of law yesterday, after a hearing related to the hospital scandal, Dr. Gregg articulated the reasons why the case should proceed without interference from the Labour Party and the government. The opposition contends that the state advocate not only possesses the authority, but also bears the responsibility to take appropriate action. Dr. Adrian Delia, recently appointed Shadow Minister of Health, said that the state advocate is obligated to take action against both current and past government officials implicated in the controversial hospitals deal. Dr. Greg raised concerns about the lack of information regarding the ongoing international arbitration case. He said that the Nationalist Party has already assisted the government by providing a judgment from Malta's highest institutions. The outcome of these legal actions remain pivotal in the quest to recover the substantial amount involved in the disputed hospitals deal. And what are the implications for stewards healthcare? that is a major healthcare company in the US. Didn't you see the last notification in the press that Stewart has now arrived in the state that it cannot even pay its coffee bills? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes, I've seen that. This is ridiculous. So what are the repercussions after the this? The repercussions which only even further prove that Stewart or the management of Stewart wasn't anymore the steward that we read about in, uh, in the news and in the papers some 10, 15 years ago, but today a company which seems to be on the brink of uh, fi financial problems. Mm -hmm. What happens in the case of uh, stewards um, going in, be becoming bankrupt? Yes, uh, if steward becomes bankrupt, mm -hmm. then solely, personally, and jointly and severally with Steward, they are the Maltese functionaries which should pay out the 400 million that the people lost. Let's make it quite clear. Who are these Maltese functionaries? These Maltese functionaries, there's a whole list, but I'm going to, in a nutshell, put the most important people who were involved. Corrupt Joseph Muscat. Chris Cardona, Conrad Mitzi, Keach Kembri, the Prime Minister, Robert Abela, also Professor Shikluna. Apart from that, a whole list of other people which were directly and indirectly involved. Sorry, I forgot to mention Chris Fern as well. These are the people which we've indicated in our writ. But there are other people as well involved, the ones who had to do due diligence and they didn't do so. Mm. Maybe the, people, the people who in, aren't so much in the public eye, you mean? No, they are in the public eye because they were appointed by Indis mm. and by the authority and they were, and they were auditors, um, like if I remember correctly, a certain Mr. Castagna, Emmanuel Castagna. Uh, a certain uh, Mr. Robert Borch. Mm. These people who had the duty, according to law, to act and see that everything should have been vetted, mm. did not do their job. Mm. This has been proved in the, in the lawsuit which Dr. Delia had filed in 2018 and which was finally decided in October 2023.
Now the important thing is when we're doing the analysis. And I'm going to quote Joseph Muscat here. He said, because in politics, eventually, it's always the people who have the final judgment. And, and that is what I invite people to do. Uh, we listen to the first PAC rendering, then we listen to the second one, and then substance try to understand where they were really asking the difficult questions, whether there was connections before this was actually uh, put into play, how the tender was issued, how he knew nothing about anything at all uh, parts of the proceedings. And there, people have to decide whom to believe or otherwise. May I ask you, you were a leader of the opposition, as a leader of a party, is that probable that you don't know what's going on around Let you? Let me tell you, when, when you have a key minister and basically most of this particular project, like other big projects, we had occasion to, to even in your um, uh, programmes discuss the Vitals contract. Absolutely. Again, there was the same figure yes. which was very prominent, Conrad Mitzi. Uh, Keach Cambry, the same people always in the loop. Now, I, am, I, I just invite people to, to understand one thing. When you're leading something, you have key people who are taking care of, in this case, projects. I'm not as expecting the Prime Minister of the time to know the details as in consumption, units, pricing, Micro in minute, yeah? which he was answering about. There he was very happy giving us all the numbers, the details, the names, the bank consortia, everything. So in the detail, he was very well prepared. But when the general questions, specific though, insofar as when did you know, did you know it, he knew nothing. Because, he said, he was leaving all this to either the minister or the people doing the tendering procedures. Now, it is true that the politician cannot enter into the tendering procedure. If that has done, that is uh, the wrong thing in, in itself. But if there were talks, if there were discussions, if there was progress, if there was, like there was in the Vitals case, for example, an MOU, then he would certainly know. Nobody, nobody will, will make me believe that something done by a top minister who was the most trusted of his ministers, the key or star candidate, if Conrad Mitzi knew something, if Keith Cambry knew something, then Joseph Muscat knew that thing. So there are more people than that, but the political gurus who are responsible for the payment of, to bring back the monies which we've paid out abusively, are the ones I have mentioned. Robert Abela should have never continued paying monies to these people, to these people, that is stewards, when the Auditor General had told him already that this is a fraudulent deal. Robert Abela, post-2019-20, continued dishing out payments until judgment was given by the Court of Appeal. From that period onwards, he has to answer for his abusive and illegal action. The same way has Professor Shikluna to answer throughout the whole period, because he was the Minister of Finance throughout, as well as Mr. Fern, who was the Minister of Health, why were payments continued being dished out when they knew that nothing was done? Mm -hmm. And tell it to the Marines. Mm. It's not true that the 400 million were paid out for payment of employees, paramedics, doctors, no. etc. It doesn't include that, wages. That right? does not include wages. Mm -hmm. So, these payments, for the question you have asked, where did the money go? Well, we know that they were paid out fraudulently in collusion with these authorities, and it is they now, as the corrupt people indicted, who have to answer the question where these monies 
have gone. They are bound to return back to the state coffers all the money they have paid out. It's useless saying, vitals have taken them, stewards have taken them, we haven't taken anything. Do you think it's realistic that this will happen? Well, if it does not happen, I think that our state, in retrieving our money from our taxes, has lacked us greatly. People who pay the taxes regularly expect that their money is administered correctly. And if the state advocate does not indict and sue civilly, criminally it's the commissioner of police and the attorney general, but civilly, these people which I have mentioned and others which could be also involved because they did not do the duty, they are bound to return monies to the state coffers. Dr. De Bono, do you believe this is a case of organised crime? And do you believe that the recent cabinet reshuffle changes things? I think it's, it's actually, it, it can be talked about to, to treason when you've got people in cabinet who acted against the interests of the state. This is something very, very serious. Now we had an ex-Prime Minister who gave orders that this deal should be signed with two deputy leaders of the Labour Party, Chris Cardona and Conrad Mistzi, involved to the hilt in the finalisation of this deed. They should answer where the money has gone. And also the incumbent Prime Minister and the Minister of Health and the Minister of Finance, both Shikluna and Clyde Caruana, who are to ensure that no payments be affected to um, people who have not done anything for us but literally, literally ransacked our country. And what are the repercussions to Malta's reputation as a jurisdiction when it comes to international trade? It's out there. Uh, this is out there for all to see. I think Mr. Fern will have complications if he is going to be submitted um, as a European Union Commissioner for Malta because there are a lot of questions which he would have to answer and he is not in a capable situation to answer saying in the interest of our country. Thank you very much for today. After the next court hearing, we'll obviously have another update with you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your Thank time. You. was our current affairs briefing in English and we spoke with Dr. De Bono. Our broadcast was aired from Valletta. Should you have any queries or comments with regards to the hospital's contracts, please send them by WhatsApp to the number that appears on the screen. Thank you for watching once again. I'm Lea Hogg for NET TV.